darling viewers, it's Jen here at Check Her Joy, and this time I'm reviewing Frostburned by Patricia Briggs. This is the seventh book in the Mercy Thompson series, and I listened to the audiobook for this, which is narrated by Lorelai King. I've already reviewed the first six books of the series, so I'll post a link to those reviews in the description below if you want to check them out. Also, since this is book seven, it might spoil things that happened in the previous books, so if you haven't read them yet and are planning on it, you might want to go start with book one, Moon Called. This book um, starts off with Mercy and Adam being newly wed. So the last book, we had their marriage and their honeymoon, now they're back and trying to settle into their life. And we meet them the day after Thanksgiving, actually like a couple hours after Thanksgiving, and Mercy has had one really long day. I mean, she's had the pack over for Thanksgiving dinner, and that was great and everything, um, but also it's kind of stressful. A little bit. You have this holiday. It's not really yours. Also, werewolves can eat a ton. And even though Mercy didn't have to cook it, I mean, it's still not the easiest. So, she and Jesse, Adam's daughter, are off doing some retail shopping. They're partaking of the Black Friday sales. And while they're out in this bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic, they end up in a car accident. And it's not major, they're just a little dinged up, although Mercy's car, the rabbit, is demolished. And so she needs a ride, and so she's trying to call Adam, and she can't reach him, so then she starts calling other members of the pack, and she can't reach any of them, which is really weird. So she knows something's up. And then she gets this mysterious message from the Maroc saying that the game is afoot. And apparently everybody's in non-communication. Mercy and Adam have this mating bond happening where they can share thoughts and can like literally step into each other's um, experiences. And the mating bond allows Mercy to find out that they've actually been kidnapped and exactly how much danger they're in, which is a ton, because this group managed to kidnap and abduct 30 werewolves. Like, that's a lot. So they didn't just take Adam, they took the whole pack. And so it's really a mystery about who took the pack, where they're hiding, because she can only see some things. Adam's out of it. He doesn't really know where he is. He doesn't really know what's going on. All he knows is that there were like armed guards hardy around him. Um, it's not great. And also the fairies have gone into hiding. They're planning something and they've shut themselves off. And so tensions are really high because only the fairies and the werewolves are out. <clears throat> Nobody knows that anything else exists. So there's a lot of pressure and a lot of spotlight on the werewolves to see what they're doing. Also, it means that Mercy's uh, mentor and best friend, Z, is not going to be able to help her out here. The fairies aren't going to be able to come save the day. Mercy can't rely on the pack because they're missing. So she's got to find other allies. Um, so that becomes super interesting to see who she turns to and who's going to help her um, and exactly how much danger they're in. She's also lost her car, so she happens to have Marsilias, the main vampire who really, really hates Mercy. Uh, Marce Marcelia's really expensive car is in Mercy's shop and Mercy decides to borrow it without asking. And it doesn't exactly survive unscathed. So Marcilia, that already hates Mercy, is not going to end well when Marcilia finds out what happened to her car. So finding her allies, one of them is obviously Kyle, who is one of the other werewolves' mates. But he's human, and he really shines in this book, like standing on his own and protecting himself, helping Mercy out, using his mad lawyer skills. Like, it's really amazing. I love Kyle. We also get to see her pulling in other allies, like Stefan the Vampire, um, and Mercy getting to use her own shape-shifting things. Um, Mercy really comes out as being really strong and really protective and really involved in the pack. We also get to see a lot more about how the pack dynamic works and the pack bonds, because Mercy is really relying on those to find out what's happening. A couple chapters of this book are narrated from Adam's perspective, which is really cool. We get to see what Adam actually thinks and feels about Mercy um, and the things that maybe he can't necessarily put words to, which is so sweet and adorable. But it's also a little bit weird because most of the books written in first person perspective for Mercy. But then when Adam's, we're following Adam, it's in third person and that's really strange. 
So the shift in narration and perspective threw me a little bit. But the real danger in this book feels very real. It feels like very high danger. Everything's in shift. Everything's up in the air. Um, who can kidnap and abduct an entire pack of werewolves and control them? Um, yeah. So lots of suspense. I really did enjoy this book. I thought it was fascinating. I gave it four stars, which is also the rating that I've pretty much given for this whole series. So that's pretty much the end of my non-spoilery section. So if you haven't read this book yet and don't want to be spoiled, peace out. I love you guys and keep reading. Otherwise, let's go. Okay, a few things in this book. First off, the werewolves get kidnapped by federal agents, but they're like rogue federal agents who have joined this cantrip agency specifically so that they can keep tabs on and control werewolves. And so they try to take the werewolves out. And they've got this bankroller and trying to figure out who the bankroller is and why it was so interesting. And it's also a little bit frightening that these mercenaries can get um, their acts together that much and control the werewolves and hide them. And then the fact that they want to use Adam to assassinate a senator was also kind of awful. And the fact that he, they were using the entire pack um, to kind of force them to do what they want. And then that wasn't even really what they wanted anyway. They really just wanted Adam and the pack to go away. And they needed an excuse to do it. Um, so the cantrip agents were pretty much awful. We also see this new werewolf come into town. This rogue one who is now part of Bran's pack. And he's the Moor. And he's basically this assassin with this really interesting past. And I thought that that was so cool to meet him. And how he... Um, he and Adam kind of fit together. Because they're both very dominant werewolves. Um, but also they're on Adam's turf and this is Adam's pack and so they're constantly, there's tensions and they're trying not to fight but also like the pack um, werewolf stuff is bubbling under the surface whether they want it to or not. And the character was super interesting. There's also that cantrip agent who was trying to help them whose name I can't remember because it's been so while but I thought he was awesome and it's good that they can have allies and the fact that Tad and Z eventually did help. And that's Marcelia didn't end up killing Mercy for destroying her car and that they were in so much trouble that that was such a minor thing. Um, the whole bit at the end where Mercy is needed by Marcelia to take down, I think it's another vampire. Um, and this big, big battle in the middle of the vineyard was so exciting but also kind of scary and I felt so bad for Mercy because she didn't ask for any of this but also she kind of has to just to protect her own. I just I was along for the ride and I super loved it and enjoyed it. Another thing about listening to the audiobook is I kind of just like um don't get quite as much into it because I can kind of sit back a bit so it doesn't retain in my memory as much. Um, but I did enjoy this book. I thought it was really awesome. I loved seeing Jesse kind of step up. Like, Mercy doesn't have anyone else to rely on, so Mercy or Jesse becomes a big part of this also. I mean, we've seen her do that before, but it's also just always fun to see that. So, I enjoyed this book. I'm loving this ride. I've already read book eight, so totally I'm just chugging along. So, yeah. <laughs> Peace out. I love you guys, and keep reading.